All right, so we can get started. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending our Why Study Social Science this session. My name is Aylin, and I am a recruitment officer at Huron in the Recruitment and Admissions Department, but I'm also a proud graduate of Huron University in the Social Sciences faculty. I graduated with a governance, leadership, and ethics degree, which I can't say enough about. I absolutely loved my time in the program, and I'm excited to be here with all of you today to be with Dr. Lindsay Scorgi, as well as some current students who are going to be here to answer some questions that I will be asking them for about the first 20 minutes. And then at the end, we will have time for a Q&A. So if you do have any questions throughout, please feel free to throw them in the chat and we will make sure that we get to them by the end of the session. So to begin, um, Dr. Scorgi, would you be able to introduce yourself? And then we'll have Ariane and Desiree introduce themselves as well. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um, so as Aylin said, I'm Dr. Scorgi. I am um, a assistant professor in the Department of Political Science at Huron. I've been at Huron now for about seven years. Um, and I, I absolutely love uh, teaching at Huron. I love the focus on, on the teaching and the small class sizes. Um, I teach the introduction to political science for first years. So if you do come to Huron and take political science, you'll likely have me um, as one of your professors in your first year class. And then I teach a couple upper year um, courses in the area of African politics and uh, genocide um, and conflict, sort of that, that area and comparative politics. So um yeah and i'm i'm looking forward to uh discussing more about why why you guys should all take social sciences at, at huron ariane would you like to go yeah uh i just wanted to confirm if you can hear me clearly perfect hey guys i am aryan lakhan paul i'm a second year student studying at huron university college at the university of washington ontario and I'm pursuing economics right now alongside research. Uh, I believe it has been a great, great, great experience for me because uh, economics, sometimes you will get confused. Does economics fall into the category of social sciences or does it fall under the category of sciences? Because there's a lot of confusion about it. But at Huron, it comes under the social sciences. And I believe uh, the experience that I've gotten from the program has been amazing. Uh, just not because of the professors, not because of the classes, but just also because of the content that has been taught to me. So for example, if you were a student in economics, you'd be introduced to, uh, you know, like the introductory courses first, and then you go into the inter intermediary courses. So economics program, again, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns about it, feel free to reach out to me. Also at Huron, we offer you a research program as well, alongside your main program. So if you ever have any questions or concerns related to that, please let me know. And I'd love to share my student perspective as to how the journey for me has been. Uh, me and Desiree will be speaking about it afterwards. Thanks. Desiree? Yeah, for sure. So hi, everyone. Good morning or good evening, wherever you are around the world. Uh, my name is Desiree. I'm a third year student at Huron. Um, I'm also in the social sciences program. Um, I'm pursuing a double major in psychology and sociology. Um, I know um, we're just here to like uh, answer any questions you might have about um, social sciences and the student experience and talk to you about how unique um, the learning program and the style is here at Huron when it comes to research based courses um, and just student life in general. So uh, I'm so glad to see all of you here. Okay, great. So for those who have just joined, we just introduced ourselves. You haven't missed too much. We're going to start into a question portion, and then we will have a Q&A at the end of the call at um, around 1020. So uh, please feel free to throw those questions in the chat throughout the presentation question and answer um, so that we can get to those. Our social science program at Huron is really unique. Um, like our small class sizes really do have an impact on our social science program, as well as having access to professors for research experiences like Ariane mentioned. I participated in one with Dr. Scorgi. Um, there's also some experiential learning trips um, that you have the opportunity to participate in. For instance, in my second year, I took another one of Dr. Scorgi's courses on peace building and reconciliation in Rwanda post-genocide and got to travel to Rwanda to do field research. 
So there are so many opportunities at Huron that you can't necessarily get anywhere else that really do set our program apart. So without further ado, we will start with the question portion. So I'll throw it out to our panel. Why study social sciences at Huron, specifically over any other university? I can start us off here. Um, so I, um, pr prior to uh, teaching at Huron, I actually taught at um, the other sort of affiliation places of, of Western. So actually I taught at main campus, I taught at King's. Um, and uh, my experience at Huron was definitely unique and I think offers um, amazing opportunities. So though, as we've mentioned, the small class sizes is, um, is, a, is a huge plus. So for example, I teach the, the first year course and um, you know, the, your tutorials, your seminars in the first year course are actually taught by the professors. So myself and the other professor that runs the first year course, we don't have TAs. Um, so you get a lot of interaction right from your first year with your professors. Um, and I know by the end of your four year degree, you will know pretty much all the professors in, in the department of whatever you know, subject you're majoring or minoring in. Um, and you, you're able to really sort of develop like strong working relationships with your professors, uh, which can have some really, really strong benefits for what you're doing afterwards. So for example, just practical things like reference letters. Um, you know, I know students at main campus might struggle a bit to actually you know, have a professor that knows them well enough to be able to write a really strong reference letter. Um, and at Huron, students don't really have to worry about anything like that. Um, you have a you have a lot of accessibility to professors, and I think that's that's something really really unique at Huron and and a huge bonus. Um, and also just the the small class sizes. So I teach seminar courses where you know it's common to have like ten to twelve students. And um, and that that's just such an, a unique and amazing you know learning opportunity and something you don't really get until grad school at, at most universities. Um, so that's that's what I would say are some some of the big big bonuses. Ariana or Desiree, do you have anything to add from the yes. perspective? Yeah, for sure. I think um, Dr. Scorgi's point about uh, the small class sizes is definitely one reason that I think Huron is so unique. And also, I think because Huron specializes in only a select number of programs, um, that's like the social sciences, business and arts and humanities, um, you know that it's really focused on giving you the best liberal arts focused education that you want. Um, and you get a lot of hands-on experience. Um, I think in a lot of my research-based psychology courses, I've had um, the opportunities to conduct my own studies, um, focus on um, like writing my own lab reports. Um, I get that one-on-one -on -one attention from my professors where I can go to them at any point and just ask them like, you know, for one-on-one -on -one help and they're more than happy to provide it. Um, and I think this experiential learning that you have with the opportunity to conduct your own experiments and your own studies right from your first year really makes you own unique because by the time you're in your third or fourth year you would have already written quite a few of like quite a few research papers and quite a few independent studies you would have conducted on your own so it's something you're already used to and something you have the hang of doing so yeah great okay we'll move on to question number two do you have to declare your program in first year? Meaning, do you have to know exactly what program you want to go in to in your first year and stick with that for your next four years? Uh, I think I can uh, answer that question. So first year, again, is all about exploring because uh, in your first year, you're not supposed to say, hey, I'm an economic student or hey, I'm a, hey, I'm a student in the political sciences. I don't think that's necessary at your own. Uh, so the fact is you enter your first year with an open mind, you take, for example, I, I was very interested in convex from the start. So I just kept in mind the requisites that I needed to fill. But even if you're not able to fill the requisites right in the first year, you always have an opportunity to cover up in the second year or the third year. So I can personally speak that some of my friends uh, were not really interested in economics at first, but they just wanted to see how the subject was. So they took a variety of courses, for example, economics, political sciences, maybe psychology with that. And they had a lot of electives. Turns out they were more interested in psychology instead of economics and ended up in the psychology program in the second year. 
So definitely you don't have to declare a program in the first year. You just enter with an open mind. Uh, you, you have the flexibility that you need at your own. And then in the second year, you're offered the opportunity to declare a program. But even in the second year, if you're not very sure as to what you want to do, you still have a lot of time. You still can have an undeclared major and you can ha have an opportunity to connect with your academic advisors and figure out what you want to do or which subject you're interested in. So you definitely have the flexibility there. Yeah, I would I would just um, echo uh, what Ariane said, and um, and I I do teach the first year course, so I know that um, a lot of students might come in as Ariane said with an idea of what they want to study, and by the end of the year, that's that's totally changed. Um, and in your first year, you're taking five courses of five different subjects, so you really have an opportunity to sort of like dip your toes in all these different areas that you may never have had. Um, you know, access to before. And Huron's pretty great about, uh, you know, there is a lot of flexibility. I know a lot of, I know students in like their third year who sort of change um, paths a bit and might like switch majors or minors. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, I think because we're, we're so focused on like social sciences and arts and humanities that it is, it is a bit easier in Huron's case to sort of switch as you sort of find your, find your way. Than in other places. Okay, great. Oh, sorry, Desiree, do you want to add? No, in fact, like uh, Aryan mentioned, um, I, like first year, honestly, really is all about exploring. And I'm just saying that from personal experience, because like, uh, unfortunately, I came with the mindset that I only wanted to do psychology um, when I was here. But because of how many options there were, and I took environmental science, I took religion studies, I took all of these introduction introductory courses um, in my first year and I found that I really really enjoyed sociology um, and I decided to do a double major in it and there, I did get a like a direct question asking like you know how can I do sociology as a major if it's not offered at Huron and I think that's a great question um, because um, I bec because sociology is not offered at Huron I do have the option of taking it at main campus so I'm still a full-time Huron student um, but I also have the opportunity to take courses at ma at main campus or any of the other affiliates if it's not offered here at Huron. So yeah, if you um, you don't have to declare your major or your program at all in your first year, it's always subject to change because of how many options there are. So yeah, I think that's uh, the benefit of just like having so many options and just having the opportunity to explore um, everything. Our next question actually is about flexibility to combine programs. So Desiree, do you wanna jump off and just kind of talk about how your double major works in terms of your courses and your degree? Yeah, totally. Um, you can definitely combine your liberal arts degree at Huron with um, any other program at main campus, which is Western or with the other affiliates at Brescia or Kings. Um, if you're interested in sociology, for instance, um, I do know that Brescia and Kings only offer criminology sociology courses, um, but main campus has like a wider variety. So um, like I mentioned, I'm doing a double major and because it's not offered here at Huron, I've decided to do it at main campus. Um, yeah, and in fact, if you wanna combine your program with a business degree as well, uh, you have the option of um, doing that with the Ivy Business School because of Huron's partnership with it. So you can incorporate an Ivy HBA degree, which is the Huron Business Administration degree with any honors uh, or major Bachelor of Arts degree here at Huron. So you don't really have to choose between two programs. Um, you get to like experience them both uh, without having to give up on one. Okay, great. Yes. And you can do a double major, you can do a minor um, at any of Western's campuses. Um, so that's great. Thank you so much, Desiree. So our fourth question is, are there any unique courses or opportunities um, that Huron offers? Something, a neat course that's maybe not found at another university, some experiential learning. I know I touched on one of Dr. Scorgi's already, but if you guys want to elaborate on that, go ahead. I can, um, I'll elaborate a bit on the one that I, I offer. Um, so uh, as Aylin said, um, most years, obviously not during the COVID pandemic, but most years um, I've offered a course to uh, the Central African country of Rwanda and um, this, the students um, study peace building, reconciliation, and then they travel on their reading week 
to Rwanda and look at those issues in more depth. And sorry, I have a little toddler here who's trying to interrupt me. Um, and we they meet with NGOs, government officials, peace building groups, a whole range of different um, groups and, and individuals to get a better understanding of of how reconciliation after conflict and genocide works. And it's something that, you know, is really hard to understand in the classroom. And so I think there's so much value added to being able to actually experience this on the ground. So hopefully we'll be able to resume that again next year. Um, it's a third year course, but we take actually even first years in some cases. And um, anyone from any subject, it's a political science course, but we we open it to, to all subjects and, um, and usually take around 20, 20 students. So yeah, I love doing it. And I think the students always have a really, really good time and something that they really sort of remember in the years to come. Ariana or Desiree, do you have anything to add about some unique courses that you've taken at here on? Like, uh, as I mentioned in my first year, like I had like a preconceived notion, oh, I want to be in economics, but I think I definitely had some space for electives, right? So in my second year or in my first year, I took an interdisciplinary research uh, research course that I'm taking right now. It comes under the scholars electives program, but what it, it's again a technical term, but what I'll simply explain is that during your undergraduation, if you're interested in research, for example, you might want to get into academia, you might want to go into grad school, or you just want the research experience, that class definitely helps you because during that time you paired up with a professor, you work under their guidance, uh, you're able to learn from your peers about how research actually works. So right now I'm just learning about the research methodologies and hopefully when I'm in my upper years, I'll be able to build my own research project. So just getting that experience of having your own research project during your undergraduation, which usually people end up doing in grad school, is something that is offered at Huron. Plus the class size isn't that big for that program, right? So for example, if I'm interested in economics and I want to pursue economics in the aspect of research, I can definitely tell it to my professor. They can pair me up with a mentor in the same field and I can walk, I can just have that path with them for the next two or three years where I'm, uh, till I'm at Huron. So that was definitely one of the cool courses I took. Another one was Storyteller's Art. And I believe that was a great course for me because uh, I wasn't really interested in English courses or stuff. I was like always afraid of English courses because I was afraid of writing essays and stuff. But when I actually came to the Storyteller's Art, I knew, oh, we're watching movies and we're reviewing movies uh, on board documents. So. I think that wasn't like a course course for me. It was like just a fun experience of just watching movies and reviewing that. So definitely one of the other cool courses was Storytellers Art. I would highly recommend everyone to take it though, if you can. <laughs> okay, great. And we do have a lot of really unique courses because our school is small. Our professors are able to do that. We have an English course about superheroes. We have one on plagues and pandemics, which is very timely. We have a course on children's literature. So there are some really neat courses, even though we are a small, smaller school, you still do have a lot of opportunity to take a wide variety of courses. Okay, so our last question before we head over to the chat for a QA and a is a question that we get all the time as recruiters. What can I do with a social science degree once I graduate from here on? I would be happy to take that. If Okay, so I think what I really love about pursuing a social science degree is that I get the chance to interact with so many people and not just individuals who are doing like the same program as me or who are doing the same courses as me, but also students and professors who have completely different skills in so many diverse areas. Um, and since the social sciences at Huron, at least, fo focus on developing critical thinking and reasoning skills, I believe that students can pursue so many different careers that require interpersonal communication um, that involves working with others and other reasoning skills. So um, I think with a social science degree, students can pursue a variety of careers um, that are in the health um, sector, the um, human services sector, political, legal professions, counseling, social work. Um, and yeah, again, coming back to psychology students who pursue um, like who pursue like a specialization in it usually go on to grad school to complete their doctorate or a PhD. Um, 
but personally, I, uh, I'm, since I'm only doing a major, I'm looking to go to um, complete my master's in psychology and sociology. So there's just so many other options. Like it's not um, only a single path that you have to go down. But yeah, there's so many things you can do with your degree. Yeah, I would just add that I I hear from students in the years afterwards of graduation, and it's such a wide range of fields that they've gone into. Um, so lots do go, you know, from political science into law school or grad school. But then we have lots that, um, you know, go into government, whether that's like actually running for positions or more like policy making. Um, we have students who go into like NGO work, charity sector, international organizations, like I've former students working at the UN now, um, such a huge range of, uh, of, of fields that they've gone into. Um, I heard from Dr. Bradford the other day that he has one of his former students working in Hollywood as like a talent scout or something like it's just, it's a huge range. And I'm always, I'm so impressed by what, what former grads have, have gone on to. Okay, great. Thank you. So thank you so much for answering our preset questions. And now we'll head over to the chat and see if we can get as many done as possible. So the first question um, is for Ariane, if you could just shortly explain what your economics journey was, um, and then we'll head on to another question. Okay, perfect. I, I'll keep it super short. I saw economics, I saw math. I was like, no, this isn't happening. Because I, I, I'm good at math, sort of, but I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to do this. This is like a lot of my other stuff. But I realized that once I entered into the program, the introductory courses really give you like a recap of what you might have studied in high school. Or if not, it's general for everybody. So for example, many of my friends did not have economics in their high school and they entered into the introductory economics courses. They were able to do well just because the course had a very stable pace. So just about like my experience in the economics program, you enter with the program with, with you know, you don't have to have any experience or any requisites or any prerequisites. You take those introductory courses, you actually get to know if you're interested in economics or not, because in my first year, they emphasize on applicability. For example, we used to study a chapter and write an assignment on it as to how you can apply that concept in your real life. For example, consumer market equilibrium or, uh, you know, maximizing your utility or something like that you can, they, they make you feel that, oh, this can definitely happen in real life, like decision-making, behavioral economics, everything. So definitely my experience in the program is still going on right now. And I would love to explain it uh, afterwards. If uh, I, I'm not sure who asked the question, but if you ever want to reach out to me, I can drop my email in the chat as well. And we can have a chat about it as to if you want any more of my experience, any more explanations. Thanks so much, Ariane. The next question is, what is the size of the first year and upper year classes that you took? Actually, I would love to answer that one because um, I remember in my first year psychology introductory course, I think that a lot of students take in their first year, which is 1100E. Um, they had three different sections for the class because there were still so many students who wanted to take it. So they had to split up the students in three different sections at three different times. Um, but even then, um, it was, I think, around 30 or 40 students per, like, per section. But now in my upper year psych courses, I'm, cur I'm currently taking a personal relationships class with Dr. Irene Chung. And we have only 18 students in that class. So um, I think the uh, like, upper year courses have considerably fewer students than introductory courses. So yeah, um, definitely uh, there's a huge uh, change when you like, enter upper year courses in terms of class sizes. Great, okay. So a few questions have been answered in the chat. So I'll just skip over those in terms of time, but um, someone has a question about um, enrolling in economics and wanting to pursue Ivy business perhaps um, in their third and fourth year. And maybe Ariane, you can speak. I don't know if you've taken any business courses. If not, I can touch on it a bit. If the subjects in economics are in sharp contrast to the business courses. Uh, they're not in sharp, uh, sharp contrast because, for example, uh, if you're in your first year and you take these introductory courses, you enter in your second year and you're taking these intermediate economics courses, they have a lot of things that will definitely help you if you do end up going to IB. Because, uh, for example, in IB as well, you talked about managerial economics. Uh, 
And when you do, for example, we have subjects like the first year business course and the second year business course. I have seen people taking economics courses on the side of that. That definitely has helped them because when it comes to business, it's not about only accountancy. It's not about only management. It's definitely more about decision making. And economics has a major part in that. Definitely has a major part. So you you you'll never feel that oh, taking economics wasn't beneficial for my business journey because when it comes to the professional world, you'd definitely be able to learn how decision making works how you're able to do some calculations that you might not learn in a business course. And there are many things that you might not learn in an economics course, but are covered in the business course. So definitely they complement each other, not as a contrast, but just as a complement. So definitely it would help you down in the lane. Great, thank you. Okay, our next question, um, maybe Dr. Scorgi, you can take this one. Are there times where your professor is available out of class times to work out difficulties in learning? Yes, um, the answer is definitely. We all the professors hold office hours every week during term. Um, so most of us have two times a week that we hold office hours. Um, and then we, you know, as I always tell my students, if you can't make my office hours because you have class or other commitments, then we can meet another time. So we're we're pretty accessible. We also answer emails. So a lot of the interaction with students is email as well. Uh, just to add to that, I think professors, like when you're a student, you really like, I think, I don't know who asked the question, but like the professors here are really, really accessible. Um, last year, I had to spend it back home um, because of the pandemic, uh, the campus was closed. So I think the professors were really accommodating in times of like, you know, the times to meet with them. And um, I just, I sent an email to my prof once saying that I'm having a really hard time understanding this concept. Can you please explain it to me maybe when I'm in class? And she literally said, got, got back to me within like an hour saying, oh my gosh, are you free right now? We can hop onto a Zoom call and clear it out right now. So I think our professors here are really, really accessible and compared to main campus at least, um, you can, I can guarantee you would at least receive like a follow follow up within like the next 24 hours. So you don't have to wait maybe like, I don't know, two business days for them to get back to you, but they, um, they're really quick when um, you have a doubt or if you just wanna like speak to them. Okay, last question. Are there any interesting communities or clubs which focus mainly on politics and governance within the student body? Um, Aylan probably actually knows <laughs> more than I do, but um, just from what I hear from students, uh, they have, for students that are more interested in like international politics, there's things like Model UN, Model NATO. Um, and remember, like you can, if you're a Huron student, you have access to obviously Huron's clubs and organizations, but also main campuses and, and so on. So um, yeah, there are, I know, I know a lot of our students are very involved in that. I think there's like also a pre-law society. Um, yeah, those are, those are, I would say the ones that I'm most familiar with and I know students really participate in. All right, one more question that came through specifically about programs is um, they're wondering if I, myself, and also maybe Dr. Scorgi can jump in on this, the difference between political science and governance leadership and ethics. So I can speak about the governance leadership and ethics program. I think one of the largest differences is just it's multidisciplinary. So the program does are, is comprised of political science courses as well as business, philosophy, and history. So you take courses from all of those different programs to really complement your degree. You take different courses within the government, governance sector, leadership and ethics, and you really focus on how the three sectors of government, um, business and not-for-profit work together to create society. So in that sense, it is a bunch of different programs kind of put together to create a really different program, a really unique program. Um, but I did take a lot of political science courses as a part of that because you do have a lot of flexibility with what you want to focus on in the degree. So maybe Dr. Scorgi, you can touch a little bit more about how political science works. Sure. Yeah. And I would just say a lot of students, it's a really popular combination, um, GLE and political science. So we do have a lot of students that double major. Um, but political science is more focused on specifically sort of how um, society is organized politically at like the local level, national, regional level, and internationally. Um, so in the in the political science um, program, you basically you start off very general, and then you can sort of choose your stream. So you the streams are international, 
um, Canadian comparative and theory. Um, and so you, you can choose to stay sort of general and look at all of those, or you can sort of choose your own stream. Um, and you sort of get a taste of all of those, those different ones in your first year course. Okay, great. So it is 1030. So thank you so much to our panel for answering all of the different questions. If you guys have any more questions, you can reach out to um, myself. I'll put my email in the chat. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions um, from a student perspective, recruitment perspective, as well as admissions. Um, if any of you want to share your email in the chat, feel free to do so. Thank you so much for joining us today. I will let you know that our next session that is happening is why on earth should I study religion? It's all about helping you understand people no matter what career you're going to go into, um, as well it's another one of our programs at Huron. We have virtual tours starting at 11 a.m. Eastern time, and there are drop-in sessions throughout the day. So I really encourage you to take advantage of all of these different opportunities that are happening right now to get a better sense of what Huron is like. And thank you so much for joining us today and have a great day.